If you're on the hunt for the best deals on aquarium products, then stay tuned as I'm going to take you on a journey to discover whether Temu, an online store that's exploded in popularity, is the place to find them. So let's get started. First off is a 35 feet generic air tubing for $5.21. That's about 6.7 feet per dollar. It's a pretty decent deal, but you could probably find better deals someplace else. However, it does have this nasty chemical or factory smell to it. Furthermore, it's just standard air tubing. There's nothing more to it, unlike this next item. Here we have a 25 watt heater that comes with its own guard, heats the water to a precise temperature of 25.6 Celsius, and costs a small fortune of $15.11. However, one downside is that there is no way to adjust the temperature setting. It's an automatic heater specifically designed for small applications. Or is it? Let's put it to the test. In this small bucket, we have water at a current temperature of 21.3 Celsius. Initially, I tried placing the heater directly into the water, but to my surprise, it started to float. Thankfully, it came with a suction cup. At first glance, it seems like there is no indication that the heater was functioning. However, I was mistaken. There is a red LED that illuminates when it's actively heating. So I let this run for about an hour and to my surprise, the heater's LED turned green. As for the water temperature, it increased to 26.6 Celsius according to my temp gun. While it's only a degree warmer, it's still within an acceptable range. This was just one experiment, but I'm already impressed with this heater, and I would definitely recommend it. Filtration is an essential subject of the plant-to-tank world, which is why I decided to try out some sponge filters, or what they call it, pneumatic water goblin filter. These filters are marketed as quieter, more delicate, greener, and more durable. While I'm not in entirely sure what a more delicate sponge filter entails, but it is definitely greener and has a seemingly high quality sponge that they call biochemical cotton. The outlet unfortunately tends to come loose very easily. Maybe this is why it's more delicate. On a positive note, the suction cups do provide a secure fit. Moving on to the mini filter, the sponge and suction cups are still excellent. Interestingly, I found that the sponge from the larger model fits perfectly onto the mini filter. Now as for its build quality, the plastic on the mini filter, unlike the larger model, is made out of thick, durable plastic material, providing a nice sturdy construction. Now, let's put these sponge filters to the test. Starting with the larger model, as expected, the outflow flew immediately right off. Moreover, some bubbles don't seem to pass through the outlet as intended. Considering its price of around $8, I believe that there are better options available that actually function properly. On the other hand, the mini filter performed admirably. It didn't leak, and the bubbles went where they should be. I actually like this compact filter, and I recommend it for small applications like fry bins. If only the larger model had the same level of construction quality. This here is a thermometer, or so I think it is. Let's peel back the sticker and see what it said. Oh. Anyway, this is a thermometer. Those flashing numbers only appear on camera, lasts for about 7 seconds, and is only in Celsius. Moreover, there doesn't seem to be any initial protective film on the screen, even though it looks like there is one. As a result, there were already scratches present on the screen. Also, the screen is made out of plastic. There is some adhesive on the back, as well as a small metal thing, which is actually the temperature sensor. Now, let's move on to the testing phase. I added the thermometer to the side of my tank, and I let the experiment run for about 2 hours. The results came out to 22.7. Celsius. How accurate was that? For starters, the tank's heater is set to around 24 degrees Celsius. Furthermore, my trusty temperature gun showed 23.2 degrees Celsius. The thermometer is not super accurate, which is okay, but it's not something I will be relying on in the future, especially for a price of $8. Hopefully, this next item will show brighter potential. This is a 14.9 inch LED light and is the most expensive item that I got for $16.37. Its build quality is roughly the same as generic cheap lighting. It's not cheap per se, nor does it feel high quality. Things are looking pretty solid so far, so let's try it out. That is super blue. If you think that's because of the camera, you are dead wrong. It's that blue IRL. It's nothing like the advertised pictures. Plus, filling the tank with water will do nothing to change the color unless the water itself is of a different color. For reference, this is what the Night Crew Classic looks like on camera. Now, can this light grow plants? Probably. The real question is how well does it grow plants? And for that, I'm not gonna find out. I currently don't want to risk any of my plants dying if this goes wrong. Plus, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. 
Next up, we have the Universal Indicator Paper, also known as Litmus Paper, which is used for pH testing. The instructions on the back are quite interesting. The solution to be tested in the middle of drip test paper compared with the standard colored version of half a second later, namely pH value. The rest of the rules are very coherent, so I'm not sure why this one got butchered so hard. Anyway, taking a look inside, we get quite a lot of litmus paper. Furthermore, the test ranges from 1 to 14. Let's try this out. I think I dipped too much of the paper into the water. The results showed that the pH was at 7, but how accurate is that? I went and tested the water again, but this time with the API pH test kit. Results came out to around 7.2, so the limits paper was somewhat correct, but it's definitely worth to invest more in a test kit that has more accuracy, despite this indicator paper costing a mere $2. Our last item is a simple planaria trap. It's completely made out of glass, so you have to be careful with it as it doesn't feel very sturdy. The cap is also something to handle with care as it doesn't adhere to the bottle as much. I'll confess, I don't have any use for this at the moment, so I won't be trial testing this. However, it's nice to have when the time comes, especially for its price. Now, should you buy from Temu? Well, considering the products that I liked, maybe? Temu has practical aquarium related items that you can get for a very cheap price. For example, this slick bubble counter for only $3. The total for all of my items also came out to $43.88 Canadian. Furthermore, Temu was just released in Canada, though product variety is limited at the moment. If you live in the US, you may have more luck. Moreover, Temu has free shipping and it doesn't take months for packages to arrive. However, there are a few things to keep in mind. A staggering 98% of the items that I've come across have a radiance of 4 to 5 stars. How many of those are real? Well, that's up to your interpretation. The site is actually real, but a little deceiving. You can think of it as another AliExpress type of website. Let me know what you think of Temu and if you'll order from there. If you do plan on purchasing and are from the US, use my affiliate link in the description. This helps me get a small cut from your Temu purchases. And if you don't trust this website, you can use my Amazon affiliate link instead. But what if you have no idea what kind of products you want to search for? Here's a video of mine that goes through 20 different aquarium-related gift ideas. 